Here we are, together again for another encouraging time of music and word on this edition of Hope Today. Thank you for tuning in. Pastor Tom Cullen will be considering the question, what did Jesus mean when he said he was the vine? The relationship between the branch and the vine is essential. More answers today during our program. Let's get started with Mac Wigfield and a time of encouragement in harmony. Well, good Sunday morning and welcome to Hope Today. This is gospel music time. Here's a group called Under Grace. A song of testimony, walking with Jesus, the greatest thrill I've ever known. Such a beautiful walk each day, walking along the way. Walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus every day. Every day. Dark clouds have rolled away, there's sunshine all the day. Walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus every day. Every day. Since Jesus came, Since Jesus came into this heart of mine. with Jesus every day. What a wonderful change I've seen since Jesus came to me. Walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus every day. Since sorrows all have passed, I now have peace at last. Walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus every day. Since Jesus came, Since Jesus came into this heart of mine, I like to say, I, like to say, I walk with love divine. And now I know, and now I know the joy He brings each day. Walking and talking all along the way. And now I onward go with glory in my soul. Walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus every day. Since Jesus came, Since Jesus came into this heart of mine, my life has changed. I walk with love divine, and now I know, and now I know the joy He brings each day. Walking and talking all alone. song, eh? Well, for some people, the question is, Jesus who? You can't walk with somebody you don't know, right? Here's a song from Sweetwater Revival, inviting Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, all of you who burdened be. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, all of you. Is he okay? Is he easy? Is burden? 
realize, of course, this is not the Jesus of popular mythology that wants to be a pal and hang out. This is a master. That's why he's called the Lord Jesus Christ. What he's looking for? Well, he's looking for everything. Pastor Tom Cullen will tell us shortly a little bit more of what that means. For the moment, Gordon Mote will tell us in song, Give Them All to Jesus. Are you tired of chasing Pretty rainbows Are you tired of spinning round and round Wrap up all the shattered dreams of your life At the feet of Jesus lay them down Give them all, give them all Give them all to Jesus Shattered dreams, wounded hearts Broken toys Give them all, give them all Give them all to Jesus into joy He never said you'd only see sunshine He never said there'd be Promised a heart full of singing About the very thing that once caused pain So give them all, give them all Give them all to Jesus Shattered dreams, wounded hearts and toys Give them all Give them all Give them all to Jesus And He will turn your sorrow into What a great start to our morning. Thank you, Mac. I'm Pastor Tom Cullen, and we're asking the question on Hope Today, 
What did Jesus mean when he said he was the vine? I'll warn you, the answer is not an easy one. But if you stay with us and put your trust in Jesus, I can tell you, you will never be the same. You will discover wonder upon wonder. Here is Robin Mark and Days of Elijah. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trial, In the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus says that he is the vine and we are the branches. And very simply, Jesus is telling us that Christianity is all about a relationship with him, just as the branch is in relationship with the vine. I'll always remember Grover from Sesame Street teach about near and far. He begins very close to the television screen and says, Now I am near. Then he runs away, stops, turns, and says, Now I am far. Then he runs back into the camera and says, Now I am near. Well, Scripture teaches about near and far also. Far meaning distant from God and near being close to God in relationship with him. So the Holy Spirit writes in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away, have been brought near through the blood of Christ. Think of it. The central purpose of the cross of Christ is to restore the relationship that was broken between God and us by sin. God, who is holy, cannot be where sin is. In order for him to be with us, our sin must be forgiven, wiped clean, and try as we might, we cannot do it ourselves. So God did it by coming to earth in the person of Jesus Christ and dying for us. 
Now, through faith in the sacrifice of Christ, we are forgiven. Our sin is paid for, and that relationship is restored. The great news of the gospel is that we who used to be far from God have been brought near through faith in Jesus Christ and are able to live with God now and forever. This is the truth that Jesus teaches us in our text today. He's stressing that what counts in Christianity is the relationship. Todd Delaney sings the truth in Proverbs 3. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me will forever be fruitful indeed. No one gets to the fire Except that he comes through me Jesus says, he is the true vine. Now that raises the question, does this mean that there are other vines? And the answer is yes. The vine was a symbol of Israel, and they understood that if a person were to have a relationship with God, they would have to be related in some way to the nation of Israel. So Jesus is saying that all the images of the vine used up to this time in history are types. They are signposts, which all point to him who is the true vine. So now, if you want a true relationship with God, it's not through the people of Israel or through the rules and regulations of Israel, but through Christ that it is gained. He is the essential, enduring vine, before whom all other vines are but types. They are but shadows. Jesus is the substance. He is the true vine who can give life to the branches. 
Do you know that there are some people who put their faith in a church or in a pastor, but when that church suffers division or that pastor stumbles morally, these people walk away from the faith, and it's a great tragedy. I remember going through a terribly cynical time in my relationship with the church. I was complaining that the church wasn't what it should be and the church wasn't following its God-given mission. What a waste of time is the church, and I thought of walking away from the faith. But that's an immature attitude. It shows that my faith was in the church and not in Christ. He is the true vine. There is only one relationship that counts. There's only one person you should cling to, and that is Jesus Christ. A church may stumble and lose its way, and that's heartbreaking, and we must do all we can to truly be the church. But the church's failures are not a reason to walk away from the faith. Our faith must rest squarely upon Jesus Christ. He is the true vine. So let's walk closely with him as Alison Lynn sings. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all. John Wilbur Chapman attended two Sunday schools each week in his hometown of Richmond, Indiana. He attended a class in the morning at one church, and in the afternoon he would go to the Grace Methodist Episcopal Church. 
It was in the Grace Church that he first professed his faith and accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. He was 17. He remembers that a guest speaker was presenting the lesson that day and asked if there were any present who wanted to become Christians. John remembers that every boy in the class stood up but him. His teacher, Mrs. Binkley, looked at him and gently encouraged him to stand also. Throughout his life, he always remembered the influence of his wonderful teacher. Wilbur went on to become an outstanding pastor, writer, hymnist, and leader in the denomination. But he was most remembered for his evangelism. Hundreds were influenced to take a stand for Christ during his crusades held in the United States, in Canada, and all around the world. In 1910, in the midst of these endeavors, he wrote the hymn, Our Great Savior, or as some know it, Jesus, What a Friend of Sinners. The Haven Quartet sing for us now, Our Great Savior. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, lover of my soul. Friends may fail me, foes assail me. He, my Savior, makes me. thinking of the words of Jesus in John chapter 15, where he says, He is the vine, and we are the branches. Think of that image of the vine. You don't have to know much about gardening to know that the vine is the source of life for the branches. If the branch is to grow and bear fruit, that ability is gained through attachment to the vine. So it follows, if a branch becomes severed from the vine, it will wither and die. Some years ago, my son John and I cut down a huge branch from a tree in the forest. It was shaped like a giant Y. So we stuck it firmly in the ground and attached a large piece of bungee cord to each side, making a huge slingshot. It was a ton of fun as we launched golf balls into the air in the summer and snowballs in the winter. For three years, we left that branch stuck in the ground. And over that time, we noticed that the branch never grew, never sprouted, never bore leaves again. Eventually, it began to rot. Why? Because it was severed from the life of the tree. It became a great play toy, but it was essentially dead. Jesus says, He is the vine, and we are the branches. 
That tells us that he is the source of life for you and for me. Just as the branch depends on the vine to reproduce its fruit, so we are to depend on Jesus to reproduce his life in us. All we need to do is rest, to surrender ourselves to Jesus Christ. Raise your voice and sing glory to the King with Eli Doomer. Do you hear the sound of a storm? Jesus said he was the vine and we are the branches. What does that mean? I once heard a fellow pastor share his story of how when he and a friend became a Christian at the same time, they would go to prayer meetings and Bible studies and worship together. And the pastor said, I remember one day walking to a Bible study with this girl and saying to her how hard I thought the Christian life is. And to my surprise, she agreed with me. She too had been finding it hard. We had only been Christians for a short time, but we found that there were so many things to do, so many good meetings to attend, so much to read, so many ideas to think about. Then, as we walked along, it dawned on us both, this revolutionary truth. Maybe we were trying too hard. And that's true for many Christians. We try so hard to be Christian. But listen, I have some good news for you. Jesus said he is the vine and we are the branches. Christianity is not about trying to keep certain rules and walk in a certain way or perform certain rituals. All of them are good and often help in our spiritual development, but these aren't what the Christian life is all about. It is that when you become a Christian, the very life of Jesus takes up residence in you. He now lives in you. And this new life of Christ sets you free from sin and death and enables you to live life for Him. So the strength to live the Christian life is Christ alone, just as a vine is the source of strength to the branches. Here is Keith and Kristen Getty singing of the fruit of His presence here among us. 
Oh, how good it is. Oh, how good it is when the family of God dwells together in spirit, in faith and unity, where the bonds of peace, of acceptance and love are the fruit of His presence here among us. So We're celebrating the truth that Jesus Christ is all that we need for life. And we at Hope Today pray that you're building your life on the firm foundation of Jesus. Here is Michael Card. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith. In His excellent Word What more can He say Than to you He hath said To you who for refuge To Jesus have fled Oh 
one Jesus has leaned for repose. I will not, I will not desert to its foes. That so, though all hell should in Jesus said, He is the vine, and we are the branches. What does that mean? It means He is our strength. We often pray, Oh God, give me strength. The kids give us a hard time, and we whisper the prayer, Oh God, give me strength. We have deadlines to meet at work, and we pray, Oh God, give me strength. But that's a bad prayer, because it's not the truth. God does not give strength in the sense that he zaps us with a lightning bolt so that all of a sudden we have the patience of Mother Teresa, the speaking ability of Martin Luther King, and the physique of Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, 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 no. Listen to what Jesus is teaching us here. He says, he is the vine. He is saying, he himself is our strength. He does not simply give us strength, nor does he teach us techniques for producing strength. He is our strength. You see, the Christian life is not a technique or a style. It is exclusively the consequence of a relationship that allows the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Lord. So our source of strength is Jesus Christ, the vine. Our ability to be Christians is not doing this and this and this. It is rather being in relationship with Jesus Christ. It's loving him. It's praising him. It's enjoying him. It's depending on him. How is your relationship with Jesus Christ, the true vine? Are you trusting in him alone to produce his life in you? Or are you allowing your faith to rest on some other person or a ritual or a situation? Let me tell you plainly, they will all fail. Only Christ will continually, unfailingly supply you with what you need to live the Christian life. May you join with Wren Collective and affirm that the Lord is your wisdom, your true worth, your vision. You are my vision, O King of my heart. Nothing else satisfies only you, Lord. You are my best thought by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, your presence, my light. You are my wisdom, you are my true light. I ever with you and you. You're my high song.
praise or a man's empty praise. You're my inheritance now and always. You and you only, the first in my heart. High King of Heaven, my treasure. Hope Today is produced at Straight Path Studios, and it is a joy to bring it to you. If you have any comments, please email them to listener at hopetoday-llp.ca. Our prayer is that you will be grafted to the true vine and receive the eternal nourishment Jesus alone will give you freely. Won't you bring your friends along and join us next time for another encouraging program in Word and Song. We look forward to being with you. In the meantime, remember that God, our Heavenly Father, does love you.